Arts and another wonderful place for desserts, lunch, and great soup, Zupa's and Nina, and Lisa is their pastry chef there. Good to see you, Lisa. Nice to see you, too. Thank you. People rave about your desserts because they're more of the rustic dessert, the, um, you know, killer brownies, great lemon bars. All Lisa's bars are fabulous, and, and they're big. Red velvet cupcakes, do yes. you make that? Yes, there? We've too. made those on the show, um, but they're just just delicious, my kind of dessert, not fancy. Um, you can, they're big and you can cut them into littler portions yes, if you need to right. for a dessert party. Um, and I'm really excited to have Lisa's brownie recipe. We, we got it out of her. I don't know how <laughs> we did that, um, but I'm excited because I think there's nothing better than a good brownie. Oh, I do too. When people find out what I do for a living, a question I get asked a lot is, what's your favorite thing to make? And we're going to make my favorite thing the today. Brownies. I love brownies. Yeah, I'll go wherever <laughs> to find a good brownie. Yes. You know, there's something about brownies. Oh, I, they just make me happy. Yes, they're <laughs> wonderful. And it doesn't look like there's a ton of stuff um, going on here. This not, is a very too simple hard. recipe. And I, I can also show you how you can take this recipe and alter it and make different types of brownies just using the same base recipe. Love it. All right, so put me uh -huh. to work here. All right, we're going to start first with a 350 degree oven. Okay. We'll set that and we also need to spray our baking pan with some nonstick spray. Now Lisa uses always for her um, bars and, and brownies and things like that these nice big you know, jelly roll pans. Yes. Um, this is my favorite pan to use. You could put this recipe in a 9 by 13 pan. It will be a lot thicker so you would need to bake it longer. Uh, but these are great because they serve a crowd. And if you're having a dessert party, you want plenty for your guests and maybe a few left over. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. All right, so I sprayed my pan. Okay, we're going to start with our wet ingredients. Okay. And what we have here is two and a fourth cups of canola oil. This okay. will make it nice and moist and okay. it'll make them hold up okay. over time. We also have six whole large eggs okay. that we'll add to the canola oil. Okay. So six eggs and two and three quarters cup? Two and a fourth cup. Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter cups. The full recipe you can get on our website. A lot of oil, a lot of eggs. These are really going to be moist, yes. which is, you know, the key, I think, to a good brownie. No one likes those dried out brownies. No, not at all. <laughs> okay, the next thing that we need to add is some vanilla bean paste. And I love to use the vanilla bean paste because it has such nice, rich vanilla flavor. I want to show it to you um, how it looks. It's... Well, it looks like a paste. Does it come in a tube, or how does it come? It comes in a plastic uh, container. Okay. And they're good size, maybe 16 ounce, uh, maybe 20 ounce containers is how we purchase them. For you guys. Uh -huh. Now, I'm thinking that some of the uh, specialty gourmet food shops and some of the, the you know, bakery supply places that sell uh, retail may, you know, they may come in a tube or something like yes, that. Yes, you probably can buy them in that form. We go through it very quickly. Yeah, I'm so sure. So we I'm buy sure. it in large but amounts. But the deal is it's just a real concentrated vanilla flavor. Is that what it yes, is? Yes, it's very concentrated. You can even see pieces of the vanilla bean I seed can see that in there. In it. And once you go use this, I bet you never go back to the other no, stuff. it's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I'm going to have to <laughs> pick some of that stuff up. So vanilla paste. Now, if you couldn't get a hold of that, would you just do a... You could use vanilla extract. It would be a, the same one-to-one -one ratio. Okay. okay. Now, here's one of my secrets. Whenever I make something with chocolate, specifically brownies, I like to add a little uh, coffee, instant coffee to it. I think that kind of punches the flavor mm. of the chocolate up. So mm. I've got just a small amount, a teaspoon of instant coffee, and you could omit this if you're not a big fan of coffee. You're not really going to taste it a lot. It's just going to give some richness kind of in the background. Yeah, I'm with you on that. There's some, something between the... Co well, I'm a mocha freak, uh, yeah. um, so... <laughs> Something about that combination of chocolate and coffee. Oh, and then you'll really yeah, like these. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So that's our wet ingredients for our okay. brownies. Very simple to put together. Okay. So for our dry ingredients, I have in this bowl two and a fourth cups of all-purpose flour. And to that, we're going to add three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder. And the cocoa powder I'm using today is the Giardelli's cocoa Ooh, powder. Ooh, good stuff. Which I love. It's got such a rich brown color, kind of a reddish brown, and it's really a nice pure product. Mm. We're also going to add to that three cups of sugar. These will be nice and sweet. There's a lot more sugar than there is flour in this <laughs> recipe. I noticed that. <laughs> That's okay. It's a dessert party. And to give our uh, brownies a little rise, we're going to ha add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and a little salt, one and a half teaspoons of salt. I think that's another key thing. You know, chocolate chip cookies and brownies, that little bit of salt, I just think it just makes it sweeter or it something. Does. It yeah. enhances the flavor. Yeah. We're also going to add two cups of semi sweet chocolate chips. Mm. And these are not melted or anything. We're just going to put them in. Our brownies are going to be moist, but they're going to have a little bit of a crunch to them. Ooh, I like that. 
So, All right. so now at this point, our wet goes in. The wet goes right on top of the dry ingredients. No mixer involved. No mixer at all. I like recipes that you just mix things together and dump it in a pan. And brownies um, and muffins and things like that, I think, you know, if they're a little lumpy, that's okay. That right? is okay. It does bake out in the oven. So we just want to combine this together. Now the great thing about this recipe is it's a rather large recipe as, as I'm using the 11 by 17 jelly roll pan, but what you could do with this for a party is split this recipe in half and use two 8 by 8 square baking pans. And then you could put different toppings on them, you could, uh, once they're baked, you could add chocolate ganache on top, which mm. we have here. You can see from our finished product, I do have a couple of brownies here that have our chocolate ganache on top. In the next segment for the cereal bars, I use the same ganache to put on top of the cereal bar. So I'll mm. show you how to make that in the next Yum. segment. For this brownie, it's something that we have out at breakfast time. I call it a breakfast brownie. For those of you that have a sweet tooth in I'm the morning. I'm all about breakfast brownie. Oh. Yeah, what's that? And I see some nuts. And basically what I've done is put my homemade granola that I make at the restaurant, mm. and I've just mixed it into this brownie batter mm. and baked it. Yeah. Uh, this brownie in the front, I've put the uh, brownie batter in the pan and then just pressed on top of it M&Ms and pecans and chocolate chips and fun, baked it. Fun. So that's another way that you can change it. And it looks it. really pretty. And the last one is a cream cheese brownie mm. and it's just a mixture of cream cheese and sugar and eggs and vanilla and you just spread that on top and then bake it. So you can use the same recipe split it into different pans and make different varieties great of brownies with just the same recipe. You could do it with a box mix also. That's a great idea because uh, you know then you've got the dessert party and you've got the platter and it just gives everybody a lot of different choices. Yeah, and you really haven't done that much Yeah, work. exactly. <laughs> so this goes in and my producer Jocelyn's saying, I want to lick the bowl. <laughs> I'm with you, Joss. I'm with you. If I was at home, I'd be right in there. Ireland would be standing right nearby too. Yeah, brownies are fun to make with kids too. Yeah, there's a little, bit of, a little bit of dry there, but you say that's going to... Yep, that'll bake out. Bake that'll out. be fine. Okay. Now, with this recipe, you'll put it in a 350-degree oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. And it's going to, as, you, as it bakes, it's going to kind of puff up okay. a little bit. And as soon as it levels off, that's when you know it's done. So don't overbake these. So, yeah, don't overbake these. They'll stay nice and rich and fudgy. And I think that is the key. Um, you know, whenever I've made a bad a batch of brownies... They just, um, it's because I baked them too long, you know, really. And uh, they get dry that yes. way. And you don't want that brown around the edges too much. So look at this. This is a batch of brownies. So yes. uh, approximately how long for this, did we say? About 35 to 40 minutes. 35 to mi 40 minutes. So we've got these that are going to go in the oven. And we've got some that are just coming out. I'm going to grab the pot holders there. Sure. Thank you, Lisa. And they look absolutely perfect. Look at this. This is a batch of brownies. And then we can uh, cut these into nice big squares yes. and frost them if we want we or we don't them. have to. Right, There's exactly. a million different things that we can do. So we're going to get to cutting here. Lisa's going to stick around and uh, we're going to show you how to make some butterscotch cereal bars. You know, nice crispy bars if you have to bring some sort of dessert that really needs to hold up, the kids will gobble up. This is the recipe for you.